Oh yeah, I totally trust Makoto to take care of it. Okay. Then that's that. Hold on, don't I get a say? It just shows how much they trust you. You should do as they ask. Are you sure it's trust? I feel like they're just using me. Yes, Makoto, because you're a doormat. That's why they're using you, okay? Because you never showed any backbone in this entire game. That's why they're giving it to you. How's it going, everybody? My name is Jesse Guns. Bang, bang, gang, gang. Let's get back into this game. Trigger, happy, havoc, dang, and rompa. Um, some people are saying I'm saying wrong, like dang it, it's supposed to be dang and rompa instead of me saying dang and rompa, but I don't, I don't, I don't see the difference, but you know, whatever. Um, but now we have a new, well not new, cause they technically been there, but there's a hidden secret student that's been here hiding the whole time and we need to figure out who that is. We've been given a name. I forgot the name from last time, so I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I forgot the name, so Kyoko gotta tell me again. But we gotta figure out where they are and who this is. And apparently it's a girl, so let's figure this out. Before I dive in, make sure if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Leave a like for your girl from us, social media, all the good stuff, and let's begin. Mukuro Ikusaba. See, in my mind, I was thinking Mirko because I've been watching too much anime. Um, I've been watching too much My Hero Academia, so that made me think about Mirko, which is my favorite character, by the way, on that show. But uh, yeah, Mukuro Ikusaba, that's the damn name, okay. <laughs> what? Mukuro Ikusaba, the 16th student, mm. lying hidden somewhere in this school. And we gotta the find her. Call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. Mm. Kyoko told me to watch out for her, Mukuro Ikusaba. That was three days before the next incident. Three days before we would be faced with another murder. What? Three days before the worst thing so far would reveal itself. Who, who is this? That's the one that knocked me out. That's the one that knocked me out. And I see nails, I see painted nails. So that's a, that's a she. So is that the hidden girl? Students? I don't know. Chapter five. 100 mile dash, pain of a junk food junkie. In the meantime, the day after Sakura's class trial, that morning in the dining hall. Uh, Sakura's trial gotta be one of the saddest ones that I have seen in this game so far. I love Sakura, but the way that she went out just kind of hurt me a little bit. I, I was about to cry during the during the video, but I didn't want to be I didn't want to be soft for y'all. So sorry. So let's begin the usual post trial investigation. Hey, you didn't make small talk or anything. We never get straight to the point like that. If you want to keep up with me, you must refrain from pointless small talk. Jeez, how high is that horse of yours? Well, he just acts like that to hide his own insecurities. That's what I like to think anyway. Regardless, if you want to defeat the mastermind, you need to follow my lead. They creep around the school like a mouse, but the mastermind's pride is as bloated as a cow's udder. And, and no man. matter what it takes, I will rid this world of them. Oh? Hey, Toko, you've been pretty quiet. Why is she not saying nothing? Man, you're so boring now. You just sit there like a mushroom. Gonna start calling you Miss Mushroom. <laughs> oh, she's What's getting mad. Deal? She didn't even snap back at you. <laughs> her talking makes things difficult, so I told her not to open her mouth without permission. Damn, he got you like that, Toko. He got you on a tight leash, yo. And she is following his lead. That is crazy to me. I, I, I can't. What? But if she can't open her mouth, she can't eat or drink water. I don't care. And you're okay with that, Toko? I guess she is. Jeez, how, long, how low is that rock you're hiding under? I believe this is the small talk Byakuya warned us against. Come on. And yet I let myself get involved. But it is now finished. I will never allow you to drag me down to your level again. Let's go. <laughs> We're going to begin our search. Stop running your mouth and start moving your legs. Pressured by an obviously irritated Byakuya, we all started our exploration. So is there a fifth floor here? Is there a fifth floor? So let's see. Okay, is the data lab open? Nope, it's still locked. Okay, cool. So that's still locked. We can't go in there. We've already been to the music room and the camera room, and that's the masterminds. Is it still locked though? Is it still locked? Okay, that's still locked. Okay, cool. So we can't go in there either. All right, got it. Got it. Okay, so we can go up again. So it has five floors now. Cool. Uh-oh. So here I am on the fifth floor of Hope's Peak Academy. The fifth floor has opened up to us, and it's totally different from all the floors we've seen up till now. For some reason, it feels unpleasant. To me, it feels kind of pleasant. Look, y'all got a little bamboo. Got a little zen up here. I kind of like it, personally. Oh, wait, hold on. Did somebody draw me? This is Makoto. So catch me if you can. Wait up, I'm gonna punish you. And then that says gross. I guess that's supposed to be Kyoko, maybe? Okay, what are you doing, Toko? Oh, did she want to talk to me about something? Toko, what's wrong? Oh, she wants to say something, but she's not. Is she trying to say something? 
I think she's almost just a little more and I might get it. Oh, I'm sorry, but I have no idea what it is you're trying to tell me. She just let her shoulders drop. She looks so sad. I just, I guess she gave up. So, does she know something? This is where a window we placed. Okay, there's a metal plate over it now. Metal plate here, metal plate over there too. Huh. Okay. But I'm still taking note that this floor has metal plates and all the other floors do, but the fourth one had metal sheets. So I'm still keeping track of that. Okay, what you doing, Miss Donut Girl? What's up? This floor feels different compared to all the others. I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> not sure what it is. Sorry, I had to swallow my spit. <laughs> is there some reason for that? I hope it's not anything too creepy. Okay, so let's look over here then. 5C. So this is a big ass school. Oh my god! What the hell is this? The grotesque horror of the room struck me hard and fast. What I saw was bad enough, but what I smelled, it was sour, pungent, and possibly rank. It smells awful, doesn't it? It's, it must be at least vaguely familiar to you. After all, you've been around your fair share of corpses. Are you saying it's the smell of death? Their flesh and fat and blood. There was no surprise in his voice, no shock, but he was right. I had experienced the smell more than once before. It was the smell of death and despair. But the smell here is strong, condensed. It's the smell of a battlefield. Monokuma must have, oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. What, my fault again? Stop trying to blame everything on me. If you hadn't done what you did, this would have never happened. No, 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 it's quite the opposite. The opposite? Yep, let me give you an itty bitty, eeky, eeky squeaky little hint. Okay. <laughs> as far as this room goes, I don't know a thing. I just left it exactly how I found it. You left it how you found it? What? How's that for a hint? Better than those stupid hints you get from them NPCs and those mean old RPGs. But it's pretty scary, huh? Blood all over the walls and junk? Of course, even in the outside world, people die bloody, gruesome deaths every day. So it's not really a big deal. Just keep your chin up and keep on living, soldier. Um, this ain't normal. This ain't normal for a school. What's he talking about? He just left it the way he found it. What's the meaning of all of this? He left it the way that he found it. Let's look around here. Okay, so let's look at the blood. There's blood all over the place. I want to shut my eyes forever against such a ghastly sight. It appears all the blood stains are dry and their color has changed as well. I think it's safe to assume that these stains are considerably old. This is all really old blood? Of course, I wouldn't find it interesting otherwise. And it is interesting, I assure you. What on earth happened in this classroom? He seems like he's enjoying himself. No way can I keep up with someone like that. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, I just see that, hold on, I just noticed that, not the freaking camera, not the camera, not the camera, but thank you for the coin. Um, this says eye for an eye. So what's another room gonna say, fang for a fang? Like, what is it gonna say? There's handprints everywhere, there's, okay. But what I was gonna say was that every time somebody died, the blood was like, you know, pink and everything. So this time the blood, blood is red and it's dirty. So, I don't know. I don't know if this is the color for old blood or it's something else. So, I don't know. There are white chalk outlines drawn all over the floor. How many bodies were there? I've seen this kind of thing on detective shows and stuff like that. You always see it at the scene of a murder. I wish I could say I don't believe it. Huh. What out? And there's scratch marks on the door? Like, look at... No, no! I want to go back. I want to go back. I want to go back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I want to talk to Byakuya. About what Monokuma just told us, it's like I'm not even here. He must be lost in thought. Is he really thinking that hard or is he just flat out ignoring me? He might be ignoring you because he don't like you, Makoto. I think this is clear right now. All right, let's leave then. Okay, so that room is a murder scene. What the hell is that? What is that? It says raw? Oh, this is the bio lab? Raw. Why does it say raw on the outside? Oh, and it's locked, great. We came all this way just to be denied here. The sign in this hall says Biolab, a Biolab that we're forbidden from seeing into. It kind of sounds like something out of an old cheesy horror movie. Huh, but why does it say raw? I don't know, I, I'm, I don't know, I don't know why. I don't know why that's a murder scene over there. I don't know if AI knows about it, Um, but okay. So we already looked over there, let's look over here. What room is this, is this a dojo? Is this a dojo? What is this? Ooh, this place looks so pretty. Hold on, let's look at this. A suit of armor is on display is extremely Japanese. Yes, I love this. This, I like this floor. I like this floor, I do. Hmm, and even though this room is totally enclosed, there's a cherry tree planted here, it's in full bloom. 
it's quite elegant. This is what you consider elegant? Indeed. I lived overseas for a long time, so this kind of Japanese style scenery is refreshing. But considering our situation, isn't it kind of out of place? Right, like how are they sustaining this? I don't know how they're sustaining this. Is the straw post used for sword practice? Did they use it for training here too? Huh. So was this like a samurai training room? Maybe? Okay, there's a bunch of wooden lockers in here. These wooden lockers and keys remind me of super old school public bathhouses. Huh. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, so it's the same thing as the other side. Cool. So what is this over here? That target seems pretty far away. Gotta say, pretty proud of my eyesight. Okay, so this is target practice. Do they do like archery and sword practice here? I'm guessing. So let's talk to you. Oh, what Kyoko told me yesterday. What the heck did it mean? Okay, we got it. Mukuro. Yes, okay, so are we gonna talk more about it? Kyoko? I'm not gonna say anything. I can't say anything. Kyoko narrowed her eyes. Oh, okay, all right, all right, got it, got it. You understand why, right? She was trying to tell me that whatever it is, it was important. The mastermind couldn't find out. But how did Kyoko get her hands on information that could be that important? So We're finished here. She made it very clear that our conversation had to come to an end. And just like usual, I didn't understand anything any better than before. Okay, so she knows something, but maybe she must have gathered that information when she went to that little hidden room before I did. Cause she went there before me and she was able to look around and figure out what was in there. So that's probably how she knew about the new student. Well, not new, I keep saying new, but the hidden student. Okay, so that one. Okay, so let's look over here. What the hell? Okay, wait a minute. Is this a big like circle? What the? Okay, so this is a big circle. Got it. And what's over here? What's that? A way out? <laughs> no, I know it's not. <laughs> Oh, this looks so pretty. And they got a little garden. Hello, hello. <laughs> At first I thought I saw blue skies, but turns out they just painted the walls to the ceiling. Oh, yeah. oh, but the plants are all real. It's been a while since I smelled vegetation. It helps me relax. That's not what you're thinking, is it? What, why is that bad? Mm. Don't you get it? Don't you realize the true horror of plant life? It's there, just beneath the surface. Beneath their calm exterior, they're always watching and waiting. And when they decide they can't leave us in charge of Earth anymore, they'll put their plan for global human extension into action. Y'all already know what I'm about to say. Y'all already know what I'm about to say. This man is high on the ganja, he okay? He is high on Mary Jane, okay? I don't know how else to say it. This man, I, where does he get a supply of weed in the school? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Where is your supplier? Or do you grow it? Like, did you bring that from home? Like, I don't know, but he's just using it heavily and it shows. I'm serious. Okay, Makoto's not even saying anything. He's like, I'm gonna leave you that. <laughs> leave you alone. Okay, what is this? This thing is super weird, super creepy. Flowers aren't supposed to get this big. Is this thing real? And here he go, oh my God, watch out. That's a monokuma flower. I came up with the name myself. Try and touch it and you're in for some real excitement. Your heart's all like, whoa, and the plants all like snap and your flesh is like, whoa, I'm dead. In other words, it's a monstrosity. I'm, it's pretty freaking amazing if I do say so myself. A student at Hope's Peak added improvement after improvement and created this miracle creature, the ultimate botanist. Although they don't go here anymore, they die during the tragedy. Actually. By the way, despite how it looks, that flower is super practical. I, it can eat paper, plastic, and even people. So it's totally good for the environment. Such an eco-friendly creation is vital for the future growth of a healthy society. Not that I know anything about that myself. Spouting more and more nonsense, Monokuma eventually disappeared. Whatever it is, I better keep my distance. It's that thing, eat people. Like, where's the mouth at? Is the mouth, like, right there? I don't know. I don't know. It's like a big Venus flytrap, basically. Okay. Okay. So what's up there? These Those nozzles poking out. Are those the sprinklers? So it's been watered. Okay. So they're getting watered constantly. And what is this little shack over here? Just to be sure, I should take a look in that tool shed. Hmm. This place seems totally disorganized. From a lawnmower to fertilizer, flower pots to farm tools, and leaning against the back wall. Is that a pickaxe? Okay, so we got everything you need to kill someone in this room, basically. All right, so let's look at these. 
So many flower pots, big ones, little ones, any size you might need. Maybe I'll grow some flowers to put in my room. Hmm. I don't think we should we should pay attention to that. I think we should take note of everything in here that might kill us. Okay. There's a lawn mower here. Even with this here, who's actually gonna take care of the lawn? Not me. I don't do grass. Okay. So so I'm sorry. All right. Oh, there's something carved into the handle of this crazy diamond. I feel like I remember seeing that somewhere. Mondo? Hold on, hold on. Okay, I picked you. Okay, so now, now I'm thinking. Okay, my wheels are turning again. So I'm thinking that my my hypothesis of them previously going to the school might be correct. I don't know because that says crazy diamond. And I think that was on Mondo's jacket, wasn't it? So I don't know. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it alone for now, but that's gonna be in the back of my mind this whole time. There are different kinds of gardening tools here. Are they trying to get us to become self-sufficient? Huh. Bags of fertilizer are piled up. There are so many different kinds to choose from. Something's weird about this. Something is weird about this. I feel like they've been here before. And maybe this is the place that Hero gets his weed from. Who knows? So let's look in this little tool shed. Is this a chicken coop? What's the chicken coop doing here? So we have chickens. This place even has chickens and they're alive. They're just regular chickens, right? Like they don't eat people or lay bombs instead of eggs or something crazy like that? It seems safe. So how are they living? It's a chicken. It's really alive. There's no mistake. So... How are they, it doesn't have like a second form? I'm checking each one. Okay. I know y'all getting tired of me pressing these chickens, but I'm trying to make sure that all of them are like, you know, correct. Okay. So there's, huh. Oh, you like chickens too, Makoto. Yeah, I love these little guys. They're seriously cute, right? And there's exactly five of them here. Exactly? Mm. Five, you know, the number that comes after four and before six, at least in terms of natural numbers. What, he got supernatural numbers? What is it gonna be? Like, I, I I, don't know. Anyway, whenever the number five pops up, that's a good omen. It contains the mysteries, the mysteries of the cosmos. It's a number of power, a refreshing number on par with hand squeeze, all natural lemonade. He never lets me get a word in edgewise, so, uh, okay. And what is this over here? What is that? There's some kind of control panel set near the wall. Does it control the air conditioning or something? Oh. It's for the sprinklers. Sprinklers? Yeah, it controls the sprinklers in the garden. The sprinklers are set to go off every morning at 7.30. Don't you dare change it without permission. Of course, the settings panel is locked, so you couldn't change it if you wanted to. So that means the sprinklers go off at 7.30 a.m. every morning. Yep, you got it. It's super user friendly, which sucks. So if you get here too early, you'll get drenched, so wash yourself. But you're not a little kid, right? You're too old to go running through sprinklers anyway. Or do you have some kind of water fetish? I'm gonna tell everyone. I can't like water. I mean, I do like water. I mean, I drink it every day. <laughs> I guess I've seen what there is to see up here for now, but once again, nothing I found seems to make any real sense. I need to head back to the dining hall and found out what the others turned up. One after another, everyone made their way to the dining hall, and before too long, everyone's here. It would appear everyone has returned, but still, it's just the six of us. That's barely enough for a decent volleyball team. Hey, don't be a sourpuss. We gotta think positive. Besides, even if one more person dies, we can still field a basketball team. She's so positive. Everything's so sports-minded with this one. Hey. That's like reverse positive thinking. Anyway, there's no time to be depressed. For the sake of everyone we lost, we have to do our best. <laughs> Can we stop all this group hug nonsense? We need to find out what everyone's discovered. All right, damn, bitch. What you got then? <laughs> By the way, did any of you find it? The other strange room on the fifth floor? Well, no strange is a massive understatement. The smell of flesh and fat and blood, the white outlines of countless corpses, it was more dreadful than anything I've encountered here so far. Hmm. What the hell are you talking about? The smell itself was horrific, far beyond any normal murder scene. Everybody's smell concentrated. God, I'm glad I didn't see it. I feel like I'm gonna bark just hearing you describe it. But I mean, what the hell happened in that room? I can only think of one thing. A large group of people died right there in that room. A bunch of people were killed in there? Stop, seriously, I'm gonna throw up. Perhaps that's what was meant by the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. You, you're thinking the same thing then. My theory is 
The mass murder that took place in that room is the incident said to have happened one year ago. The awful scene in that room, that was the tragedy that happened a year ago? Precisely, the tragedy is another name for the genocide of the student body of Hope's Peak Academy. If that's true, that would explain why Hope's Peak was forced to close its doors. I mean, I guess it all makes sense, but it's all just so awful. Not just awful, super awfully awful. They're right, it's beyond awful, it's terrible, tragic, hopeless, but still, how is it not one of us ever heard about something like that happening? Does that mean they really did cover it up? Hmm. Let's see what Toko has to say, probably nothing. All right, hey Biakia, it seems like Toko wants to say something. What? So, why are you telling me? Mm. To give her permission, bitch? Oh my god. Well, because you told her to zip it or whatever. I'd forgotten about that. Jesus, man, I know you're like torturing her, but like, come on. <laughs> well, Toko, if you want to envelop us all in your putrid breath, I won't stop you. You honor me, master. And don't worry, I took care of the odor problem. <laughs> Seriously, you're just gonna take it? Shut up, and don't interrupt when Master and me are talking. Okay, so what did you want to tell us? Well, I was in a classroom on the fifth floor and something caught my attention. It was this, a knife? Whoa, this thing is huge, like Rambo size. It's a survival knife of some type. But what was it doing in a classroom? How would I know? What are you gonna use that knife for? What are you planning to do to us? I'm not gonna do anything, I just picked it up. I, don't want, I didn't wanna leave a knife just laying around. I'd rather have it laying around than in the hands of a serial killer. Don't compare me to her, I'm nothing like her. Listen, more important, now that we have the knife, what are we gonna do with it? We can't just let Toko keep it, that's for sure. We don't know what she might do. I don't want it anyway, it's too dangerous. So what to do? Why don't you hang on to it, Makoto? Me? Oh yeah, totally trust Makoto to take care of it. Then that's that. Hold on, don't I get a say? It just shows how much they trust you. You should do as they ask. Are you sure it's trust? I feel like they're just using me. Yes, Makoto, because you're a doormat. That's why they're using you, okay? Because you never showed any backbone in this entire game. That's why they're giving it to you, because you're the biggest puss in the entire group. That is why. Okay, so here you go, Makoto. They're acting like I already said yes, fine. I guess there's nothing I can do. I'll keep it, just keep it in my desk drawer for now. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Hey, Toko. Do I still have bad breath? Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry it stinks, I'm sorry it stinks. You made a valuable discovery, good job. Huh? 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 Did Master just praise me? <laughs> good for you. Yeah. Oh, she doesn't want that, maybe. I'm dreaming, I must be dreaming. That would, I, I would ever experience such a dream. Oh my God, I feel strange, so strange, really strange. Oh no, oh, she having an orgasm, okay. Let's skip her. Whenever I look at Toko these days, it makes me feel sad. Yeah, truly. Okay, let's talk to Weed Man. What you got over there? Hello? Well, there's a big garden up on the fifth floor, and I found more than one thing to be worried about. A stupidly large plant, a chicken coop, and I know what you're gonna say, but a tool shed. So let's look at the first one. Monokuma said that it was called a Monokuma flower. Even touching it seems dangerous, so we have to be careful. Serious? It's totally a man-eating plant. I'm pretty sure it's different from the one that lives in a pipe, though. Anyway, that thing must, be benef must benefit from the sprinkler system as much as anything else in there. Oh yeah, apparently the sprinklers come on every morning at 7.30 on the dot. Mm. Yeah, remember that. You don't want to get drenched and catch a cold. Yeah. Well, you don't have to worry. Those, they say idiots never catch colds, you know? <laughs> of course not, because idiots never get wet. I think you're thinking of ducks. I'm starting to worry about you, Hero. Can you tell me what 10 plus 10 is? <laughs> hey, come on, you don't always have to call me dumb. I may have been held back three times, but that doesn't make me stupid. No, it just makes you special. Okay. <laughs> but if it'll make you happy, I'll answer your dumb question. So, um, what was the question again? Don't worry, you just answered it. All right, all right, let's talk to you again. Let's get more information on the other stuff. All right, Let, yeah, okay, let's look at the chicken coop. There are a bunch of chickens in the chicken coop, right? Mm. That's right, five, five chickens. I love chickens. Let's raise them up big and fat, then we can make fried chicken. Oh, or barbecue, decision, decision. <laughs> She's like me, because I love chicken too, so I'm like, let's get them things fat, so we can eat them. <laughs> oh, or how about raw? Because there's nothing fresher than raw, right? I'm pretty sure that'll kill you. So she has salmonella, she's experienced that before. All right, oh wait, ooh, ooh. Okay, let's go back, let's go back. I skipped it on accident, all right. Let's go look at you. There we go. You noticed it too, huh? That pickaxe. What about the pickaxe? It had uh, Mondo's little, not a phrase, but I don't know. It had Mondo's saying on it, I don't know. Um, well, there was a pickaxe in the tool shed and the words crazy diamond have been carved into the handle. Haven't we seen that phrase somewhere before? Mm. Crazy diamond? That does kind of sound familiar, That's I true. think. 
I don't just think I know. We've definitely seen that phrase before. Where? Oh, that's it. I remember. Right. Because it did say it on his uniform. Thank you. His jacket said the same thing, right? Crazy diamond. I see it. You're absolutely right. But why would that be on a pickaxe in the garden? Mondo must have snuck in there and done it, right? But we didn't have access to the garden until today. Then maybe Mondo brought it with him when he first came here and Monokuma confiscated it. Whatever the reason, that's what stuck out to me in the tool shed. The pickaxe connect to Mondo. Well, what stuck out to me wasn't the pickaxe at all. Then what did? What I noticed was the lawnmower. I'm thinking maybe we can use it to call for help. How are you gonna call for help with a lawnmower? I don't know, maybe I could use it to make crop circles or something. Yeah, that's it, I'm gonna make crop circles. And we can use those to call for help. What the heck's happened to you? You weren't like this in the beginning, you know? Well, back then, my personality hadn't quite solidified yet. I didn't think it was possible, but I'm more disappointing you now than I've ever been. Okay, so he just gets dumber as time passes, okay? My concern is with the bio lab. That was the only place on the fifth floor that we couldn't access. The bio lab, huh? I wonder what's in there. If this were like a cliche horror game, it'd be some kind of creature, the final boss, or tyrant, or... We're not in a horror game, though. But you are in a game. <laughs> Either way, we don't need to worry about it at the moment. Don't bother thinking about something that can't be understood no matter how much you think about it. Your tiny brains can only do so much, so focus on utilizing them efficiently. I don't really like how you said it, but what you said is probably right. No, how I said it is right, too. Does he have friends? Like, does he have friends outside of this? Did he have friends? Because he couldn't possibly. I would be cussing him out every day. I checked all the windows on the fifth floor, front to back. They used to kind of be Sakura's job, but anyway, no dice. There were metal plates on all the windows, just like everywhere else, which means no chance of escape on the, fourth, on the fifth floor either. But when I was looking around, I realized something about the layout of the school. What exactly did you notice about the layout of the school? You took a good look around the fifth floor yourself, didn't you, Makoto? Huh? Why do you ask? Because if you did, you must have noticed. The fifth floor is lacking something every other floor has. Something on all the other floors, but not on the fifth floor? Bathrooms? Are you talking about stairs? There aren't any stairs leading up from the fifth floor. That's what you're talking about, right? Does that mean the fifth floor is the end? We're finally starting to get a clear picture of the school. All that's left now is to solve the underlying mystery. Right. But that's the hardest part. Okay. Even if it's hard, we still gotta do it. Yeah, he is right. Everything will be okay as long as we work together. I'm sure we'll make it out of this. No, no, I'm sure. We absolutely will make it out of this, no matter what it takes. Hmm. Well, I think that's all the new information we have for now. No. So now what do we do? Hmm. Well, starting today, you're all under my command. But after, before we proceed, I need to figure something out. No Jeez, way. how cocky can you be? You're gonna bust through the ceiling if your head gets any bigger. Um... So what is it you wanna figure out? Kyoko's identity. Oh, cause we never understood what she was, like the ultimate whatever. I feel like she's the ultimate detective, but We'll see. Huh? Oh? No. Kyoko's identity, but Kyoko is Kyoko, right? <laughs> yes, but who is she? The rest of us have a clear, definable reason for having been selected to attend Hope Peak Academy. Hina's the ultimate swimming pro. Hiro's the ultimate clairvoyant. Even Makoto is the ultimate lucky student. No, he's the ultimate average. Let's get back to that. He's the ultimate average. More unlucky than lucky these days, but... So what about Kyoko? Can anyone tell me what she is? Uh, um... Now that you mention it, she's never told us. Mm. Well, Kyoko doesn't really like talking about herself anyway, right? It's no ma it's not a matter of what she likes or doesn't like. This is a matter of trust. Can you trust someone who's unwilling to reveal their true identity? We need to avoid raising any more unnecessary suspicions. So Kyoko, it's time you told us. I can't. Mm -hmm. What? Why won't you tell us? I didn't say I won't. I said I can't. What the heck? What do you mean? So... Because I don't remember. What? I have no memory of what I am. This is going back to my theory of when I said that I think their memories were erased. Cause she don't know. She don't know what happened. And then that pickaxe has Mondo's um, phrase on it without him ever being up there. So that means that they must have been here before and their memories got wiped. And that's why they didn't know what happened, maybe. I don't know. So, let's see. You have no memory? You mean amnesia? What? If I thought you had a sense of humor, I'd say you were joking. But if this is a joke, I'm not laughing. You can't be serious right now, can you? I knew you wouldn't believe me. That's why I didn't say anything. But it doesn't matter. Either way, the truth will make itself clear before we're done. So you have no intention of telling us? Then I can no longer stand by and do nothing. What are you going to do? Torture me? 
Nothing so barbaric as that. I will simply limit your options. I can't allow you to engage in any further suspicious activity. Limit my options? Give me the key to your room. But if she gives you her room key, she can't go to sleep in her room. She'll be breaking a regular regulation. <laughs> oh, <not> regular regulation. <laughs> School regulation. If she doesn't want that, she'll talk. It's easy. All she has to do is tell us about herself. Just hold on. A threat like that? Fine. fine, I understand. <laughs> Good. You're finally in the mood for conversation. Without a word, Kyoko walked right up to Byakuya and held out her room key to him. So, Kyoko Kirigiri. Okay. It can't be. You damn fool. Why do you refuse to talk? Because Whether I want to or not, I can't. All I can do is keep telling you that. So Maybe she really did lose her memory. Uh, if you really think about it, it doesn't sound totally impossible. This is the worst school ever where only the worst stuff happens, right? Amnesia would fit right in. The worst school where only the worst things happen. Do you really mean that? What? Okay. Can you really be sure that life here has been filled with only the worst things? What do you mean? Perhaps I've said too much. Kyoko then turned her back on us and without a word began to walk away. She is the ultimate queen of walking away. She's the ultimate walk away. -er. Like, I don't know what else to say. She She's the ultimate um suspicious one. She's the ultimate detective, ultimate walk away, -er, ultimate not telling me shit, ultimate everything, okay? She just doesn't give information. Where do you think you're going? Oh don't worry, I'm not going to do anything to harm any of you. Those were her last words as she left. Kyoko's last words, the dining hall was silent. The only sound was the door opening and closing as Kyoko left the room. The What's her deal? What? I think you went too far taking her room key like that. For her, that wasn't <laughs> far enough. Or maybe she gets off on the attention. I can't believe her enjoying getting yelled at. Like you do, bitch. Like, you're getting noisy again, Toko. Oh, oh yeah, shut that, shut that mouth. Sorry, I can still hear you. The sound of you breathing or your heart, of your heart beating, it grates on me. Are you telling her to die? I mean, I know how you feel, but, but what's Kyoko gonna do now? Plus the situation, it's just like before. It's no different from when everyone started accusing Sakura and I, I'm no different either. I still can't stop anyone. Huh? What? What the hell? Why are you yelling all of a sudden? Cause look. Oh Lord, he's just been standing there. It's you, how long have you been standing there? I'm very, very angry. Angry at what? At the thief, yes, that's right. I'm very sad to have to tell you there's a thief in your midst. What? My precious, they stole it. Your precious, are we in Lord of the Rings? Like what, your teacher has such faith in you. And this is how you repay me, with betrayal? Reality is filled with so much hardship, isn't it? No wonder people run away into their fantasies. But what the heck is your precious? Shut up, I hope all of you get stuck in a hiring freeze and die penniless on the street. So he wants us to be homeless? Don't wish that on me. And he's gone. What the heck was that all about? And he said something about his precious getting stolen? Does anyone have any idea what that might mean? It's likely has something to do with Kyoko. Huh? Who else other than her would be willing and able to steal something from Monokuma? Did Kyoko really steal something from Monokuma? But if that's true, what was it? And why would she do that? Huh? Is it nighttime now? We gotta go to bed? <clears throat> this is a school okay. announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Yes, we got the it. The doors to the dining hall will be locked. And, and okay. All right, let's skip this. Let's skip that. All right, got it. Um, we need to get out of here. You know? We can talk about this more tomorrow and about Kyoko. However, after what just happened with Monokuma and Kyoko, I feel like there's something in the air. I would suggest you take extra precautions tonight. Stay in your rooms, don't go wandering around. Not like we need you to tell us that. Well then, let's disperse. I'll see you all tomorrow. Following his lead, each of us went back to our room. Ah, that's right. I need to put away the knife that I got from Toko. So, I think the safest place for it would be in my desk drawer. But anyway, Kyo is Kyoko really going to be okay? She can't get into her room. What's she going to do? Isn't there something I can do? Something I can... Oh, I thought she was going to come to my room. I thought she was going to spend the night with me. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, here we go. <laughs> okay. As I opened my eyes, I realized I'd fallen asleep without realizing. But more important, did I hear the doorbell? Okay, so is Kyoko spending the night with me or going to try to? Oh, hey. Kyoko, I'll be waiting for you in the dressing room. See you there. Hey, wait! Without acknowledging me, Kyoko disappeared into the depths of the darkened hallway. I know we're not supposed to go out during nighttime, but I just can't, I can't just not go. She probably knows what happened to her. Sorry for asking you to meet with me so late. It's okay, I'm yeah. used to it, indeed. So then. Well then, let me get straight to the point. It's something you can't talk about in front of the surveillance cameras, right? So does that mean, does this have something to do with whatever it is you stole from Monokuma? 
Monokuma told us earlier that someone had stolen something from him. Was it you? Indeed. That's right. So I was right. But what did you steal? So... I stole this. Oh, a key? But looking at it, I could tell it wasn't just any key. It was shaped like Monokuma. It was probably the only key of its kind on Earth. Where did you get this? So... From the headmaster's room. You snuck into the headmaster's room? But wasn't it locked? The lock was broken. Cool. What? It was Sakura. She did it for us. She did? Indeed. Remember what she said in her note? I'm not just going to lay down and die. I will fight you. So Sakura broke into the headmaster's room for That's us? That's right. That's right. So we can uncover whatever secrets might lay hidden within. What's weird to me is that when I went to go investigate what changed in the school, I went to the headmaster's room and it was locked, but she said the lock was broken. And somehow she has the key. I don't know, I should stop being suspicious, maybe, but that's very weird to me, that the door was locked for me, but the lock was broken and she was able to get in there. So shouldn't that mean that everybody should be able to get in, maybe? I don't know. She did that for us. She violated the school regulations to help us. She'd already decided to die, so her last act was to defy the rules of this place. Indeed. I noticed the room was open after the class trial was over yesterday, but if it just strolled into the room, if I just strolled into the room, Monokuma would have noticed right away, which is why I use you as a decoy. So you asked me to meet you at the data center in order to correct. correct. I wanted you to draw Monokuma's attention. I took that opportunity to sneak into the headmaster's room, and as a result, I found this key. Then what you told me about yesterday, did that come from the headmaster's room to... Oh, so she maybe got that from his room. Okay, we got it. We got it. Jesus Lord. Did you find out about Mukuro Ikusaba while you was in here? I did find a file in the headmaster's room that talked about her, yes. I don't know all the details yet, but one thing I do know is that Mukuro Ikusaba is dangerous. Dangerous? She may very well be the mastermind. Mastermind? But didn't also Ego say that the headmaster was probably the mastermind? No, the headmaster isn't the mastermind. I'm sure of that. What? I don't have proof yet, but I have no doubt I'm right. To make a, to make such a strong statement without proof, that's not like Kyoko at all. But I think that she's right because I think the last conversation that we had about the headmaster's room when we discovered it was that Monokuma himself said that the room used to belong to the headmaster and then now it belongs to him. So the headmaster isn't Monokuma. So... She might be right. But if it isn't the headmaster, does that mean Muk Mukuro Ikusaba really could be the mastermind? Anyway. anyway, this key is the one big opportunity we've been waiting to get our hands on. Now that we've grasped it, we can't let it go, can we? Sure, but I mean, what's this key even unlock? So... I don't know yet, which is why I need you to draw Monokuma's attention again while I go and find out. Wait, so you're planning on sneaking back in again? You can't, that's way too dangerous. And you want me to draw his attention, but we don't actually know there's just one mastermind, right? If there's more than one person watching us, but they didn't catch one, they didn't catch on last night, right? Maybe we just got lucky. Or maybe the mastermind can't monitor us and control Monokuma at the same time. Huh? Like I said, we didn't get caught last night. But as you said, maybe it was pure luck which is why we're going to run the experiment one more time. And if we're successful again, then what may have just been a lucky guess will be proven true. As Kyoko talked, she was calm and collected as ever. I couldn't help but just stand there and listen. Hey. If it's true that the mastermind can't watch us and control Monokuma at the same time, then there would have to be a period of time where the mastermind is vulnerable. What we need to do is find out for sure if that's actually true and if we can exploit it. Maybe, but no matter what the reward, the risk is just too high. When I think that might, what might happen if we fail, I don't think you need to worry all that much. After all, huh, with minimal restrictions, you are free to explore. Okay. No restrictions have been placed on our efforts to solve the mystery, am I wrong? Even when I took the key, I didn't break any rules as far as I could tell. But if the mastermind decides to do something, all the rules in the world won't matter. He could just kill us all without a second thought. I see. I see. In that case, even if the plan fails, we'll still be able to prove or disprove that hypothesis. Ugh, hypothesis. Sheesh. What? In a moment of crisis, will the mastermind break their own rules or adhere to them no matter what? In other words, In other words we gain something whether we succeed or not. Now, there's no reason not to do it, right? But if you spend, if you spend all, all time, time trying to avoid danger, you'll never move forward. Okay then, speak for me. <laughs> we, know, we know the danger, but if that risk means solving the mystery, we have no hey. choice. Am I wrong? 
At that moment, I finally realized I had never seen the slightest hint of fear or despair in Kyoko's eyes. Her gaze was firmly fixed on the mystery ahead and an enemy standing before us. And with that in view, she just smiled. <laughs> I can't change how I feel and wouldn't if I could. Then Kyoko took something from her coat pocket and held it out to me. Huh? What's this? It's true. Consider it a symbol of my determination. Don't open it yet. Only open it if something ever happens to me. Ooh, don't tell me that she's gonna die. Please don't tell me that she's gonna die. If something happens, However, I'm not planning on dying, but there's always a chance of it, and a death without meaning is unappealing. Hey. Please, I want you to hold on to it for me. Fine, I'll hold on to it just because you asked me to, but I'm gonna give it back at some point, you could be sure of that. Indeed. Yes, of course. Hey. Oh, and one more thing. You can't tell anyone else about what I've discovered. Sure, because then there's a chance the mastermind might find out, right? Indeed. Well, there's that too. Huh? You mean there's something else? Wow. It's nothing. Forget I said anything. I can't just forget what you said! Like, I don't... Okay, so then shall we begin? Makoto. I'm counting on you, Makoto. I just have to get Monokuma's attention, right? Well, I have to give it my best Goodbye. shot. I'm going on ahead. The rest is up to you. Her curt goodbye was no different from any other time. And like every other time, she moved at a brisk pace as she left. What wasn't like every other time was the sudden knot I felt in my stomach as I watched her walk away. No, everything's gonna be fine, I know it, because it's Kyoko. Talking to myself helped shake off some of my anxiety, and then I got to work. Oh, I feel scared for Kyoko. I personally do, because something is telling me in my mind that she gonna die. I don't know, something's telling me that she's gonna die. Okay, let's do this. Hey, Monokuma, can you see me? You can see me, right? Get out of here. I've got a bone to pick with you. Then a few moments later, here he is. Well, 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 this is a surprise. You being the one to call me out. Hey, by the way, huh? What were you and Kyoko up to? Going to the bathhouse, just the two of you in the middle of the night? Definitely a hot and steamy moment, wouldn't you say? So warm and wet, so wet and warm. I bet you guys were moved to confirm with local and international censorship laws. <laughs> they said we're gonna bleep it out. All over her, didn't you? Not gonna talk, huh? Sure, I get it. Well, whatever. Unlike you, I have absolutely no interest in late night bath scenes because I like to maintain a healthy life of observation far away from X rated exploits. Oh, so is that why there's no surveillance cameras in a bathhouse? Bullseye. Or is it maybe because the lens gets all fogged up and you can't see anything anyway? Oh, oh, that's the reason? Sounds like that's the bullseye to me. Anyway, you went to all that trouble to get me out here. Now, what do you want? Oh, well, there's just something I wanted to confirm with you. Whether I'm a mademoiselle or a dude fella. But in the bear kingdom, there is no male or female. Um, there is. Seriously? Then what am I? My entire existence. That's enough. I'll get stuck if I think about it too much. So, what did you really want to ask me? Oh, well, you told us earlier that your precious had been stolen. What's this precious of yours? Listen, I'm sure this is a silly question, no way it's possible and all, but is that seriously what you dragged me out here to ask me? You gotta be kidding me, you gotta be 100 megaton freaking kidding me. You're not gonna ask something useful, like how to get the best honey, or ursin beating, breeding tip? What the hell is an ursin? Ursine? Ursin? I don't know, breeding tip. It's just crazy, are all pubescent teen boys as nutty as you? God, you're so annoying. Fine, I'll tell you, it was a key and blank. That's it. What was that second thing? It's a blank, stupid, a secret. Fill it in yourself. Making me trudge all the way out here for that. I'd like to see what's going on in that brain of yours. And the next time you summon me for something so stupid, I'll open up your skull and find out. Dropping more than a few swear words, Monokuma stormed off. Hmm. But he said it was the key and a blank. Was the blank the knife that Toko found? Cause she didn't say where she found it. She just said, oh, well, no, she did say where she found it. She said in one of the classrooms, she found a knife. So I don't know. But would that be stolen from Monokuma because technically it didn't come from his headmaster room? Or maybe she lied and it did come from the headmaster room? I don't know, but maybe the knife is it. Cause that's the only thing that I'm thinking about that was taken as far as the item. So maybe it's the knife and the key, who knows? I hoped I kept him distracted long enough. Now all I can do is wait and hope Kyoko makes it out okay. No, she'll be fine. It's Kyoko after all. I'm sure she's fine, right? See, they're setting it up to make me think that she's gonna die. I went back to my room and laid down, doing my best to settle my nerves and get back to sleep. All right, here we go, the next morning. I bet this is free time again. 
Maybe. All right, my body feels so heavy this morning. It must be because I was up so late last night. Anyway, I need to get to the dining hall, so let's go. Wait, let's check this. Is it still there? Okay, 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 the knife is still there, so we're good, we're good. Oh, everyone's here but Kyoko, I see. You're one minute late, Makoto. How do you explain this? Sorry, I'm not feeling so great today. You really think a tired excuse like that is gonna work? Huh, are you allowed to talk again? I don't recall giving you permission. Huh? I just thought, I mean, since a day has passed, it had maybe reset. Sorry, please don't hate me. Whatever my punishment is, I'll accept it. I'll hang a sign for my neck that says, bad girl. I'll clean your bathroom with my toothbrush. If you stop making disgusting comments like that, maybe I can forgive you. Yo, he is just toying with Toko. Oh my God. Let me find out that Bianca actually likes all this. Yeah, he's gonna get with her. Let me find out. <laughs> Thank you. I won't make any more disgusting comments, I promise. If I do, you can stuff my mouth full of trash. As long as it's you and no one else, I don't mind. It's no use. She's disgusting to the bone. Anyway, where's Kyoko? I haven't seen her this morning. Not cool. This is worse than being late for lunch, like for a date, for your wedding, for anything. Maybe she's mad about what happened yesterday and she's not going to show up anymore. I can't tell the others why Kyoko might not be here. The best thing to do right now is just keep quiet. Whatever her reason, I'm curious to know what she is doing. I know she's not in her room, so. Oh yeah, you still have her key, right? What's this? Oh, are you looking for Miss Kirigiri? What do you, what do you want now? I'm right, right? You're wondering where Miss Kirigiri is, right? Do you know where she is? Huh, well, it's hard to say. You don't know either. It's because he doesn't know. That's why he's here, to try and prod us for information. Uh -huh. Hey, don't you hate it when you ask someone what their favorite movie is and they name some indie bull crap? I feel like I'm getting whiplash the way he changes subjects like that. Thank goodness. It looks like Monokuma really didn't notice. So I guess our plan went off just fine last night, which could mean maybe the mastermind can't monitor us and control Monokuma at the same time. Hmm, could she have been right about that? So, was I right? You're looking for Miss Kirigiri. Any idea where she might have gone? We have no idea. And even if we didn't know, we wouldn't tell you. You're serious. Hmm, I see. Well, fine, whatever. I don't care anymore. Sin, sayonara, suckers. As soon as he was gone, we all glanced around at each other. So, what was that just now? Does that mean Monokuma doesn't know where she is either? It was seen that way. Where the heck could she have gone? Don't you think we should all go look for her? And how would you suggest we approach that task? Even Monokuma can't seem to locate her. Very yeah, how delicious. can we? How can he not know where she is? Yeah, totally. So strange. Kyoko must have used that key to sneak into some unknown part of the school. But somewhere even Monokuma wouldn't notice? Where could it be? The secret room, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> we spent the rest of breakfast talking about where Kyoko could have gone. Afterwards, we returned to our room. Oh, so this is free time? Yes, okay. Whew, breakfast didn't help me feel any more upbeat, that's for sure. I feel like this is more than just me staying up late last night. So, can I use this time to check out, like, the little secret room, see what's going on over there, maybe? Okay, let's check this bathroom. Because I want to see if anything is up with this. Okay. Oh, no, I can't go in there. All right, all right, so let's leave then. Can't go in there. I feel like maybe I should talk to Biakia, maybe. Maybe. So what is this? The garden? They're in the garden. Okay. So let's go to the garden and let's talk to Biakia. I gotta probe my enemy. I gotta stay close to my enemy, so let me probe you. What, did you need something? Yes. Let's spend some time with you. That's fine. All right, all right. He's gonna say the same thing every time. Got it. Spend some time with him. There we go. We go a little closer, give him a present. Now let's be careful about what we give him. Okay, so let's see. Um, a diamond, maybe? A diamond? Maybe? So let's give him that. And you expect me to touch that? That thing makes my skin crawl. You know what? Uh, whatever. Whatever, man. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to give good gifts, man. I'm trying. Huh, I feel even worse than I did this morning. My body feels like lead. Now I'm getting chills. This is bad. I think I might be getting sick. All right. Let me try again. Get stuff, man. I'm trying to I'm trying to do the best with what gets gifts I have, okay? I've been getting a lot of repeat gifts. I'm trying. You know what? Let's let's go to her. Let's go to AOA, Miss Donut Girl. I'm gonna talk to Donut Girl because I can get some stuff out of her because she likes food. So if I just give her food, it'll be okay. A person's ability is measured by the power they display at the point where pressure is applied. Yeah. 
That's the quote from the famous baseball player Kenji jo Jojima. I think that's what it means when you only see how strong a person is when they're under pressure. I wonder how strong I can really be. Okay, so let's spend some time with Pina. All right, so let's go. All right, went swimming, okay. Let's give her some food, cause she likes food. I gave her, let's give her some potato chips. Yeah, let's give her, oh wait, no, what did I give her before? I gave her like some, some food, some some food somewhere. Let's, let's give her that. Let's give her a sonic cup of noodle. <laughs> Makoto's like you read my mind. See, look, foodies get it, okay? I, I like her, I like her, man. Cause she likes food, I like food. I can give her food and she likes me back. All right, there we go. Does that mean she liked it? Is something wrong, Hina? I've reached my limit. I'm stuck in here, can't do any sports, can't do anything, I'm sick of it. I wanna get out under the sun and do some laps, run a marathon, I wanna do some real sports. Hina, calm down, okay? I can't do anything in here. If I can't move around, I'm gonna die, like a bunny rabbit. But I always heard rabbits die from loneliness. Whatever, I'm gonna die if I can't get some proper physical activity. Don't you think that's a little extreme? You think I'm kidding, don't you? But I seriously can't sit still, you know? Why else would I have joined six sports teams in school? Six? That's right. Yeah, track, basketball, softball, volleyball, tennis, and a big one. The big one? Swimming? Okay, so that one? Your main sport is swimming. You got it. I don't even care what stroke it is. Just get me in a pool underneath the blue sky. But isn't it hard to do that many sports, even for you? Yeah. If I can't move, I'll just shrivel up and die. And I need a challenge. More and more new stuff to try. A challenge. I mean, what I really love about sports isn't winning, you know? It's having to fight and struggle and give it all you got to reach to the top. It's that excitement, that fear that you might suffer a heartbreaking loss. What? When you finally reach the goal, it's just lonely. It's lonely at the top, you know? I never really got into sports. So I couldn't really relate to what she was talking about. But I could tell that the reason Hina was amazing was how hard she could fight and struggle. Um... So that's why I want to push myself as hard as possible when it comes to swimming. I want to aim for the very highest mountaintop. The highest mountaintop? Okay. I'm talking about the gold medal, of course. Aim for the gold, even if it means I'm a super gold spaz. Did she just call herself a uh, spaz, the things she hates? Okay, but if that's what you want, isn't that all the more reason? If you have a goal, why are you standing around making excuses? Huh? Excuses? Hey, when did I ever make any excuses? Sure, maybe we're stuck in here right now with no way out, but if you really want to make an effort, shouldn't you try to see what you can do in here? Oh, 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 there you go. Makoto dropping gems, okay. <laughs> That's a challenge. You just made an official challenge. Totally. But I think you're right. If I want to get that gold medal, I have to make every effort I can. I want to become a, geni a genius of effort. I better... Ian Thorpe says something like that. Okay. Yeah, I can't go around making excuses just because we're stuck in here. All right, I think we're gonna do some push-ups in my room, like maybe around a thousand or something. Almost before she was done talking, she took off like I'm bad out of hell. She recovered as, exactly as fast and as strong as I would have expected. So, okay, it's been updated. Your maximum skill points has increased. Cool, I need a new skill though. Once we are all done, I headed back to my room for a little while. Oh, I'm getting the chills. I feel kind of dizzy. I can't help it, I need sleep. Nighttime wasn't for a while, but it felt like my body had reached its limit. As I dropped onto my bed, I felt like I was falling into a bottomless pit. I was unconscious before my head hit the pillow. Well, that's not quite true. I didn't pass out completely. It was more like my consciousness went dim. I weaved back and forth between sleep and awake wakefulness, which is all to say. Uh-oh, is he sick? Are you okay, Makoto? I was restless. At some point, I found myself wandering through a strange dream. Uh-oh. And within the dream, a voice echoed across the walls of my mind. I under huh? understand. What? That voice is so familiar. It's mine, isn't it? I understand. It's me. I understand. Oh, I don't like I this. I understand everything. About? The only reason to get out of here. It's to stay here. Excuse me? Huh? What am I trying to say? This is all for hope. Huh? And that's why I have to stay. You're crazy, Makoto. You want you losing it. To stay here. You're losing it. You're losing it. You need to you need to get some water. My dream just now. What? So I know. Strange. Huh? Holy hell! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no 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 no! Oh no 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 no! Okay, Makoto, get the hell up! 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 Are they? Are they? Are they still there? Oh my god! Oh my god! Kyoko, I swear to goodness, if you are playing games and you 
throwing this mask on and off, I'm gonna kill you. I swear to God. Kyoko. Kyoko. What the? What did you? What did you say? Did she say anything? Oh, here we go in the morning. I'm seeing hallucinations. I don't know what's going on. Oh, man, Makoto, you are going through it. It took longer than usual for me to open my eyes. I let out a deep sigh to bring myself up the rest of the way. The chills, the aches, the unfathomable le lethargy, 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 damn it, Jasmine. They had all disappeared in the night. All that was left was me, drenched in sweat. It wasn't just because of whatever bug I'd caught either. It was also the dream I'd had. What the hell was that? I mean, was it even really a dream? I was desperate to recall it. I scrambled to grab onto fragments of the dream and reel them up from the depths of my memory. That's right, I remember last night that somebody came in my room and they had a knife over my body. I came down with a fever and I couldn't quite get to sleep. And I, I heard a voice I didn't usually, didn't really understand. And then someone was on top of me. Yes, all of a sudden I was awake and that was there. There was a strange person standing next to my bed wearing a mask and they were holding a knife. I want to say I fought them off, but I don't actually remember. Makoto, you don't fight shit, so you didn't fight him, okay? Him or her, whoever it was, you didn't fight nobody, all right? I felt like my mind had been detached from my body, burning up with fever. I was somehow far away, somewhere far away, watching my body move on its own, and because of that, I don't remember what really happened, but still, I feel like I resisted them desperately, feverishly. After that, things go black again. The next thing I remember, is Kyoko standing there on top of my bed. Kyoko was there, but what would she have been doing in my room? What was, that was a strange dream. No, was it really a dream? How can I possibly find out either way? If, let's see if that knife is still there. Open the desk drawer and it was gone. It's empty, there's nothing inside. Nothing inside, that's strange, because it definitely wasn't before. I'm positive I put the knife I got from Toko in here. That means that that was not a dream and somebody was really about to kill your ass. The knife they told me to keep safe. I knew it, I just had a feeling. It wasn't a dream after all, but if that's true, this all makes even less sense. Why would someone have wanted to attack me? And who was that behind the mask? And why was Kyoko, what the hell was going on? Well, I don't think I'm gonna figure it out on my own. So I should head to the dining hall. Then I could talk to everyone else about it. So where's Kyoko at? Cause she's just walking around this whole camp is like a whole ghost. So what's going on? Who's here this morning? Oh, just, just her? Hey, Makoto. Yep, that's Makoto, sure as the sky's blue. Hey, Hina. So where's everyone else? Where, where's everyone else, Hina? Um, you really had me worried, you know? What happened to you last night? Worried? I mean, yeah, right after nighttime hit, we all went to get you. We were hammering away at your doorbell, but you never answered. We thought maybe you'd been, you know, <laughs> dead, maybe? I mean, not that that actually happened. I mean, nobody here would wanna, you know. So anyway, what were you doing? I didn't feel good, so I went right to bed. I had no idea you guys even showed up. But why did you come to get me? Did something happen? Mm. Um, well, lots of stuff, actually. I'm not sure I can really explain. Okay. Let's go meet up with everyone else. Then they can tell you about it. So where are they at? Is everyone else waiting somewhere else or something? That's right. Oh, yeah, we all stayed up the whole night. The whole night? <laughs> I lost that rock, paper, scissors, so I had to come get breakfast for everyone. Okay. So you got here just in time. Come on, help me carry it. Okay, sure. <laughs> Everyone's in the gym. Hurry up, I'll meet you there. The gym? Why is everyone in the gym? And the entire night? Okay, so what's going on? Did they stay there the entire night because Kyoko can't leave? Or, huh, did they stay there the entire night because Kyoko still doesn't have her room key and that's maybe where she's been? I don't know, did they stay up with her? Okay, here he is. This is worse than being late for your wedding, the birth of your son, your own funeral, all at once. Jeez, to show up now, like it's no big deal. You made us stay up all night while you slept like a baby in your bed? Just like Hina said, everyone was there besides Kyoko. And then I noticed they form a circle around something. As soon as I saw what that something was, what the? Before I could catch myself, I cried out. What the hell? Okay, spread out in front of them were the remains of Monokuma. So they over there disassembling him? Like, uh, disassembling him? I don't understand. Toko's sitting there with his, with his butt in her hand and he... Hero's messing with his eye. What is going on? And what does what does Bianca have in his hand? What the hell? What are you, what are you doing? What does it look like? We're dismantling it to see what makes it tick. How did you get it? Dismantling? But I mean, that's Monokuma you're messing with, right? Right. Yeah, that's right. She's not even faced. So how did 
let y'all get your hands on it. Relax, there's no danger. You say that, but what is this? What are you guys doing? How did y'all get your hands on this thing? It looks like it's been professionally disassembled. How is that possible? Tearing apart something like that isn't dangerous? How did y'all get it? How can you say tearing apart something like that isn't dangerous? Hey, well, on. I guess I'll handle this. I'll explain what's going on, Makoto, because that's how much I like you. Hmm. Byakuya found this little fella lying around, then we tore it apart. That doesn't explain anything. What? Just before we went to bed last night, I came to the gym to try and talk to Monokuma. I wanted to see if he had any new information about Kyoko's disappearance, and I found him here, just like normal. However, when I found him, he was no more than a regular toy. He didn't react, didn't say a word. You're saying he wasn't moving at all? Hmm. I waited there until nighttime officially began, but still Monokuma laid there motionless. I gathered everyone up as quickly as possible so they could take a look. Even then, he still didn't make a move, so I immediately initiated the disassembly process. It was master stroke of genius, a chance to find out what made Monokuma tick. Hmm. One thing we discovered is that he's quite a sophisticated machine. It le it's leagues beyond any normal remote control toy. Who has enough free time to invest in something like that anyway? But besides that, what is what I'm wondering is, why did he stop moving all of a sudden? I thought maybe he'd malfunction, but we didn't find any cause as we were taking him apart. So if he didn't break down, Otherwise. then maybe something happened to his puppeteer, the mastermind, something unexpected. I can't imagine any other possibility. Something unexpected? They were probably so scared of Master, they ran away in terror. Or maybe they got sick or something. But Monokuma made his announcement this morning, right? Who was that, if not the Mastermind? Oh, I'm sure that's a recording. It's set to a timer and plays as necessary. That's true. He says the exact same thing every day, right? Hey, guys, I don't think now's a good time for light conversation. I just found something. What is it? Is that a bomb? It's what? A bomb. There's one installed in every Monokuma robot, I'm sure. A bomb? That's super bad, we need to get rid of it. Roger that. It appears the bomb has a motion sensor. Any sudden movements, I'm sure it'll go off. Motion sensor for serious? I'm starting to get all shaky. Hey, get it together, you're a man, aren't you? I'm fine, I'm totally fine. You're so not fine, you're all, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I probably should have mentioned the motion sensor is off right now. Oh, jeez, don't scare me like that. God, you're like the world's most spineless worm of the century. Okay. Hey, come on, the century's just getting started. Don't call the race already. Whatever, just hurry and put the bomb down. Hanging on to it's not gonna do anyone good. Um. Oh yeah, good call. Well. Okay, it's down, everything's all good. Carol put the bomb down, but that wasn't my main concern at that point. Um, my eyes were glued to Monokuma's remains. He just stopped moving all of a sudden. Was it really because something had happened to the mastermind that they weren't expecting? But what could that have been when I thought about it? I couldn't help but think back to the night before, being attacked by that Max figure. Hey, Makoto, huh? Hey. Don't haunt us, did you hear a thing we just said? Huh? Mm -hmm. So that's a no. What are you, some kind of brain dead farm animal? Sorry. Mm -hmm. We were saying, since we're done dismantling Mon Monokuma, what should we do now? <laughs> and we decided to continue our offensive assault. To try and uncover the mastermind's true identity, we're going to break into the headmaster's room. Really? Naturally. Since the mastermind appears to have stopped all activity, now's our chance, wouldn't you agree? But if the mastermind comes back while we're in there, if you're scared, you're welcome to stay here by yourself. Or go live in the chicken coop of all the other chickens. You could be chicken number six. This is a battle, a fight to the death between us and a mastermind. We don't have time to deliberate. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to have to kill each other or anyone else, but we have a chance now. So, what are you going to do? Are you going to run away or are you going to fight? You're right, I'll go with you. Okay then, we're going to break into the headmaster's room. Everything comes down to this moment. Anything can happen, so prepare yourself. I'll follow you anywhere, master, so all the ends of the earth. Sakura, if you can hear me, lend me your strength. Aww. I can do this. I'm a man. I can do this. I've got the will of the entire universe on my side. With, we each found determination in our own ways, and when we were ready, we left the gym. Our target was the headmaster's room on the fourth floor of the school. All right, let's go. Let's see what's happening. Oh, the, the music. The music is so dark. Hold on. Okay, Toko, any last words before we die? <laughs> Naturally, Master's the one to show such bravery. Just make sure you don't get his way. Okay, bitch. You know what? Whatever. Okay. Sakura's gonna be watching over us, so we're definitely gonna find something to help us bring this to an end. Okay, that's that's good. That's good to think. All right, what about you, big man? We finally reached the climax, so let's hurry up and finish it before the mastermind catches us all. All right, what you gotta say, Byakuya? Let's go. This is where we expose every last detail of the mastermind. Is everyone ready? 
I feel like I'm gonna die. I feel like someone is going to die at this moment. I don't, I don't know why. Someone is gonna die. It's gonna be one of us. It's still locked. It's locked as expected. So what are you gonna do? Isn't it obvious? We're gonna tear this door off its hinges. Wait, but the rules say we've seen the mastermind isn't watching us. Those don't matter anymore. But, but like Makoto said, if the mastermind did show up while we were in there, so in then we'll words, just have to finish our business before that can happen. Hey. Okay, sure, but we've come this far. We can't back down now. We agreed this is what we have to do, so we have to do it. So beautiful. I mean, for serious? What the heck? We don't have any choice. We're desperate. Okay. Let's do it. Let's rip this door down. Actually. Okay, but how are we gonna do that? The thing looks pretty sturdy. Hmm. Well, then we'll need something sturdy of our own. Oh, what about that one thing? The pickaxe? The thing in the tool shed. Oh, so oh yeah, the pickaxe. I see. Interesting. That could very well be exactly what we need. Now then, Toko, what time is it? Well, when we left the gym, it was just before 9 o'clock, so it's probably 9 on the dot now. Okay, go get the pickaxe and be here by 9.01. You want me to go there in a minute? That's straight up unreasonable. I'm by myself? Naturally. Surely you like to have your me time once in a while, right? Well, if it's me and you time, Master, then yeah. You know how much time it took you to say that? 10 seconds. Took take too long and I'll erase your existence from my consciousness. Unacceptable! Okay, so now she's gone. You know what? She just reminded me of that freaking uh, lemon grab from uh, Adventure Time. Unacceptable! <laughs> With that, Toko ran off, loud as a herd of rabbit elephants. Hey. For serious though, are we just gonna knock this door down? Hm. No problem is solved by running away. Find your stone to be a man. He's right. You can't move forward by always avoiding danger. Even if it's dangerous, we have to overcome the challenges in front of us. Oh. Maybe, but I'm still super stressed. I'm so tense I can hardly talk. I'm all flubbus. No, I'm totally flab flabbergasted. Flap sauce? Oh shit, oh my gosh. Gross, where'd you come from? Where'd that come from? Wait, Genocide Jill, where'd you come from? Hello, hello, it's a wonderful murder for his friend. Fiend, <laughs> here to greet you with a razor sharp smile. Okay. Come on. What about the pickaxe? Where is it? I was supposed to pick an axe? No, you seeping imbecile to pickaxe. Seeping imbecile? Oh, master, you wound me with your executive level barbs. Here comes the bloody nose. Seriously, though, did you really forget the pickaxe? Omega 3 fatty acids, that's what you need. Great for the old memory factory. But I think we already established that their memory doesn't carry over when they switch. Not possible. This is a level of useful uselessness I find difficult to tolerate. Mm, yes. The light bulb just went on. That's why I went to the garden, right? I was supposed to get the pickaxe. <laughs> All right, we solved the mystery. That means just one more mystery left. One more mystery? Mm. Yep, now we just need to figure out the identity of object X. Now, what are you talking about? Did you already forget what we were talking about? You're like missing out on life. I'm not missing out on life. In fact, I found one in the garden. What? What did you find? Ca car put what? Did you hear me? I said corpse. A corpse? That's right. I found a corpse in the garden. You found a corpse in the garden? Well then, before we enter the headmaster's room, it appears we have something else to look into. We're going to the garden. Okay. So there's just a dead body in the garden and she's gonna act like that wasn't there. As soon as we entered the garden, I saw it. I didn't want to, but... Oh, okay, Miss Thang. Miss, or Mr? Miss, Miss Thang? I saw someone laying on the ground with a mask covering their face and there was a knife buried in their stomach up to the hilt. What the, are they really dead? For sure, but who is it? Just to make things clear, last night I was attacked by someone wearing a mask. And whoever that was, now they're dead. I don't know why, but they're laying dead in front of me. I told you there's a corpse hanging out here. Are they really dead? Is this really a dead body? You need to begin looking around right away. However, be ever so careful. There's no telling what you might find. Huh, oh God, I don't know. I don't know if I wanna find out what's here, okay? We need to find out who this is and who this actually is. There's no way to tell with the mask covering their face like that. And the white coat they're wearing makes it impossible to tell anything about the body itself. The victim is a total mystery. But one thing I do know is that whoever this is, they attacked me last night in my room. But why? And how did they wind up dead in here? Hmm. Their heart isn't beating. They're not breathing. All signs of life have come to a complete stop. Thanks to the knife that's been driven into their stomach, their clothes are stained a bright red. It appears the bleeding has stopped, but the blood that's there is still wet. Be careful you don't touch it and get some on you. Um, How can you be so calm at a time like this? Who is it? Their face and body are all hidden, so I don't have a clue. I'm pretty sure it's a girl, at least. 
Huh? How can you tell? Well, I think I see the outline of her chest and just the general shape of her body. Yeah, the more I look, the more I'm sure it's a girl. Really? Then it could be. Okay, then. Let's just tear the mask clean off. Wait, don't. I mean, I mean, we gotta take the mask off like Scooby-Doo. We gotta figure out who's underneath there. We're not just gonna figure out who it is without doing it. But by the time he called out, it was already too late. Toko's hand shot out toward the mask, and in the next instant, ooh! There was a blinding light and a deafening roar. The body blew up. It blew up, it blew up, it blew up. Oh my God. My vision started to darken. I prepared to pass out, but then, Hurry up and put out the fire. As my consciousness attempts to float away, that voice reached up and pulled it back down to earth. Someone pressed something onto my hands. It was a bucket of water. Oh my God. Come on, dump the water on it. Okay. The upper half of the body was on fire. I took aim and tossed the water as hard as I could. Oh my God. Wait, there's like, there's like little pieces there. Hold on. Thankfully, that was enough to put out the fire. It died down, leaving behind only the unpleasant smell of burning. What the hell? So now, now we don't know. I guess that's the care of it. But what the hell, man? It exploded? I had a bad feeling about the body, but I never imagined it would explode. And now the body is unidentifiable. It's burnt to a crisp. That's beyond well done, man. And don't compare it to a steak. I've never been able to steak, eat steak again. But now that the body's charred, I really have no idea. How are we gonna find out who it is? Who is it here right now, huh? If you consider who's not here, that will quickly narrow down who it must be. There's only one person missing. It's Kyoko. Kyoko? Then that dead body is Kyoko? No, that can't be right. Calm down. I didn't say it was Kyoko. But I mean, who else? There is one other person. The mastermind. What? The mastermind? Come on, there's no way. The mastermind got charboiled. Get serious. I agree. Normally the idea wouldn't be worth considering, but I have a reason to believe it may be true. The mastermind being dead would explain that other matter, wouldn't it? Monokuma can hardly move around if its master is dead, right? But, but that corpse is a girl, right? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, remember what Alter Ego said? So that same person may very well be the mastermind who planned all this out. And according to the files, the headmaster is a man in his late 30s. It seems possible, even likely, that he's somewhere in the school right now. He said that the mastermind is some middle-aged dude, right? Which the corpse obviously isn't. Then could that mean the mastermind isn't the headmaster? Is it the teenage girl Kyoko told me about? The ultimate despair? Huh? Mukuro Ikusaba, the 16th student of Hope's Peak. What are you talking about? The other day, Kyoko confided in me. She said there was a 16th student here in the school. I think you better tell us everything you know. Well, all Kyoko told me was, we get it! We get it! I think we get it! Mukuro Ukusaba! Who we don't know! We get it! We're getting, we're getting shown the scene so many freaking times! I get it! I get it! I get it! It sounded like Kyoko thinks Mukuro Ikusaba is the mastermind. No, the headmaster isn't the mastermind, I'm sure of that. What? I don't have proof yet. There's another student here, and it's a female that would match the body's characteristics. And that phrase, the ultimate despair, it sounds super mastermindy, doesn't it? Okay, so the mastermind is this girl, M Mukuro. I keep almost saying miracle, so I am very, very sorry. I'm just too attached to uh, my hero. <laughs> and she's a student here, and she's the ultimate despair. But if she's been hiding here in the school like some teenage Bigfoot, how'd she wind up burnt to a crisp? None of this makes any sense to just suddenly show up and then die? I think we better take a closer look at the body. There may be some clues to help us figure out exactly who it is. Hey, wait! What? What? Um... Aren't we forgetting something? You know, Toko? Oh yeah, she's got totally blown up! Oh, we forgot all about her ass. We don't care. We don't care, yo! <laughs> Forget about her. I'm sure the explosion vaporized her. Oh, oh, she's, she's fine. She's fine. Oh, she survived. She survived. Huh, she's mad! What just happened, Master? You declared for the whole world to hear that you would never again inhale a single molecule of oxygen. Oh, then I don't mind breathing in the carbon dioxide you exhale. That's enough for me to live. This is the strangest back and forth I've ever seen. All right, y'all, so I'm gonna stop it right there. So now we have Mukuro Ikusaba that we keep seeing over and over and over again. And we don't know who it is, apparently, because we got close to unmasking this mystery person, but then they exploded like a bomb. But in that little explosion thing, I did see like a little robot part. It looked like 
I don't know if that's part of the bomb or part of the body. I don't know. It might have been part of the bomb on them, but that would mean that maybe I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to hold my theories for next episode. I'm going to hold my theories for next episode when I get to examine the body and figure out more clues. Cuz I have one in my mind. But I don't want to sound too weird, but <laughs> I'm going to hold off for next episode. So if you guys like this video, make sure you leave a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if y'all new. And I'll be back with another episode of this and another episode of Remothered Tormented Fathers. I almost damn, forgot the damn name of the game. So I'm so sorry. But I'll see you guys next time. And deuces.